Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Interviews to the Professional Cyclist. Today I'm like always uh, with my partner John. How are you? Hi you. And today we have the, the honor and the pleasure to talk with one of the top uh, stars of the of the peloton. Isn't it John? Yes, uh, we have Matteo Trentin. Matteo is an Italian rider of the CCC team for which he has signed until 2021. Uh, he made his professional debut in 2011 with the uh, Quick Step team, where he spent seven years of his career. Uh, in that team, he had the beginnings to end up uh, being a real winner. In 2011, he signed for the Mitchelton Scott team, where he has run for two years. And in uh, 2020, he made the leap to the team that uh, militates now. Matteo, over the years, uh, has gained importance in the international peloton, uh, becoming one of the best riders nowadays. And he has uh, nine grand tours on his legs, 23 classics and 25 wins in his career, an authentic machine. Uh, he has won stages in the three big races. In 2011, he was European champion and in two, uh, 2019, second of the world championship. Hi, Matteo. How are you handling the current situation? Hi. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm okay, uh, sitting at home, basically the whole time. And yeah, you know, rollers, uh, exercise, just staying with the kids, staying with my wife, and just stay in, lock inside. Well, Matteo, sadly we have to start talking about your your team. It's in a critical situation. Uh, members of the staff have been fired. At this moment, what's the, the situation? Apart from the 29 riders, how many workers are left? Uh, I cannot answer. I no actually a, a clear idea to be honest. Uh, not many, not many. For sure, like the majority of the staff, uh, it's it been fired for the moment. Um, we we try to to set up some talks with the team to see uh, how we can solve this situation. And yeah, talks are ongoing. And now you know with Easter Monday, Easter Easter Monday, all these kind of things. Probably the talks gonna resume tomorrow. So we are just waiting. Uh, we have our agents and the CPA doing this talk on our be behalf. And and yeah, we're just waiting if we can help the team to resolve the situation and, and get home with something all together uh, and get back the stuff too into, into the picture. And also these days you have requested with the Italian Association of Professional Cyclists to the Sport Minister of Italia about letting the riders go outside to, to train during during these days. Uh, have you reached an agreement? Because uh, we knew that uh, it would have started today at Monday 13th. Uh, no, 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 no. We, we didn't we didn't get the, the green light from the from the minister. They say not every, everyone, not only cyclists, but all the sport people, all the professionals on every sport. So cycling, soccer, basketball, volleyball and all the rest. They, they are not allowed to train outside. They're not allowed to train together. So if we want to train, it has to be inside and it has to be alone. So actually for cycling, if you don't own a velodrome in your house, then you have not much, <laughs> you have not much to do. Or, or you have like a house with a massive garden to do mountain bike or cycle cross inside. <laughs> but not many has this uh, fortune. So yeah, mostly, most of the people are just training home. And how are you training these days? Because uh, as we have seen on Twitter, uh, you have done workouts with your kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, playing playing with them is like a training. So <laughs> it's already start. Even if I don't do exercises, like I'm always active. I'm always running around. Uh, well, actually, we, we spend the day. The day passed pretty fast. So we have every, every every time something to do. I do my rollers in the morning. Then ah, you know, we, we put the house everything in order. Then we have lunch. Uh, then. Then we play a little bit together, I do some exercise and it's time for dinner. And then we play again, watch television and it's time to go in bed. So uh, we, we, we take a little bit of Spanish time. So wake up really late and go to bed really late. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's OK, too. But uh, what, what uh, impact can uh, this situation cause on you? Because uh, your teammate, Greg Van Avermaet, uh, has said that, uh, that he's uh, 35 years old and that uh, uh, a whole year without racing can have a, a very bad impact on his health and, and reducing his career. Uh, do you have uh, thought about this or, or is it not important uh, for you? I mean, uh, it's, it's in the back of your mind, you know, he's, he's older than me, he's 35, I'm 30. 
uh, 31 this year. And of course, if I don't race for the whole year, it's a, it's a year waste. But it's the same thing for a guy of 22. Uh, it's still a year where you don't learn. It's a year where you don't race, when you don't perform. Especially for us, that we are uh, only three nations because now it's Italy, Spain and France who cannot train outside. For all the rest, it's possible. Uh, and the problem is that the fitness, of course, it will go down. And the risk is always you do too much on the rollers and you just burn yourself. Or, or you do too little and, and then you, you cannot get back on in shape. So it's really difficult now training good without any single objective because you just train because you need to train, not because you, you are focused on come back, I don't know, on a certain kind of day. And Matteo, about your career and your goals, uh, we know that you are a, a man of classics because, uh, as I said before, you have uh, run the Paris Roubaix seven times, six times the Milan San Remo. Uh, can be a goal for you uh, before your retirement win a, a Spring Classic? Ah, it's a goal actually. Every every year, uh, every year, basically, I started with uh, with this in my mind to to try to win a classic. Of course, the classics are only five, the monument, and, and only three can suit my characteristic. And then there you have some semi-class, not semi-classic, still classics, but from Strade Bianche, E3, Garden Rave game, etc. Of course, one uh, one monument is one monument, and but one of the others is also good. So, of course, it's always in my mind, and I always try to, to do the best as I can and try to win, win one of them that races. Okay, and uh, related with this, in we know that in, in 2017, in the Vuelta a España, you won uh, four stages and you couldn't take the, the green jersey. It's another of your goals to take a green jersey in a big race. Uh, maybe, maybe. Of course, in, in the Vuelta, probably is the most difficult for a, for a guy like me because uh, with the point system they have, especially with the stages they have in the Vuelta, the, most of the, of the days are, are really hard. So normally it's always uh, the point jerseys for the four climbers. Uh, of course, the other two, Grand Tour, I was second in, in the Giro also, uh, when Nithalo won in 2016. And I never got the possibility to try a proper uh, proper green jersey goal in the Tour. So of course, uh, time is running. So <laughs> if I want to do it, it has to be really in the near future. Otherwise, they're going to get too old. Um, Matteo, you are a, a clever rider. You, you used to read the race perfectly and your last two teams, uh, Mitchelton Scott and Quick Step, uh, put a lot of uh, importance of preparing the tactics of, of each stage. I imagine that you had really fun there, no? Racing, racing for, for, the, for those teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never changed the team because I didn't feel myself good in the team. It was maybe more a kind of... Uh, Need, need a change between Quickstep and Mitchelton, uh, and then from Mitchelton to CCC, just because uh, Mitchelton is becoming more and more a GC team. They're looking really deep into GC, so of course, uh, then you need to sacrifice something on some sides, and normally this comes on the sprint and on the classics, but it, it's normal in cycling, it's nothing, nothing personal by anyone. <laughs> and uh, one thing that is, has been proposed by many riders, that is the, to put the three main races uh, together, And as you say, uh, uh, the proposal is like um, Ivan Garcia Cortina and Thomas again did, but yours is a little bit different because uh, you say that uh, your proposal was to do a big race, 21 days, seven days uh, in uh, each country. And do you think it, um, that is something that can be possible or is a fantasy? Uh, if someone really gets... In, in the idea that they can do it and they want to do it, then it's possible. But then you need to match all the all the big organizers. So you have uh, Azo, that is uh, is the biggest, and and it's all on the Vuelta basically because they have 51% of uni public that is the Vuelta organizers. And then you have RCS who organize the Giro. So they get together and they say there is no time to save the whole world of cycling because the the more we wait to restart the season, the less time we have to have the Grand Tours. And you have not a Grand Tour with two weeks. So that there is, cannot be called a Grand Tour. So you cannot call a two weeks race at the Tour, the Vuelta or the Giro. So if you do only one, then you use a month and you have the other maybe two or three months left to save all the other races too. So we can have a full calendar. That, that's that's why I got I got in mind to put this idea on Twitter. But you know, it's uh, it's 
it's easy and intelligent to to think, but it's more difficult mm. to to get all the business and commercial and uh, uh, interest of everyone all together and say, okay, we sacrifice everyone sacrifice something and we help each other for this year and next year we go on. Uh, it's, it's difficult in politics and it's difficult in sport too. And we've never seen you ride uh, two Grand Tours in, in one year. Uh, maybe this is the, the year that you have to do it. Uh, who knows? Because, uh, as I say, if, if we do Giro Tour and Vuelta, then if we start in July, then you have July, August, September, and then maybe you have October. So there is not as much space for any other races. But you cannot race uh, 60 days in a row also. That's also yeah. difficult. Um, um, yeah, Ion, go. Uh, one of your best uh, results of your career has been uh, last year in the World Championships, but uh, you you did the second place, but you said that you are not so happy no, with that. Why that feeling? Yeah, because when you're there, you want to win. <laughs> yeah. So, so, of course, if you get second, uh, it's still a really nice result. It's still the second place in the, in the World Championship. But when you know that you have the possibility to win, then you then you have to and you want to win. So of course it's not the second place last year is still disappoint me a little bit, but at the end is the it's not the end of the world. I mean, I was there, I have to be there again. And you you said that in, maybe in 2021 is the year to be there again. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let, let's see. It's gonna be in Belgium, it's gonna be probably a nice parkour, was what I knew. Um, let's see. Let's see. First we go over this one and then and then we go for 2021. Yeah, and also we've seen you uh, asking in your, in your Instagram uh, support uh, to the cyclists in terms of, of separation between the cars and the riders uh, for, for, much, for having much care for them. Uh, yep. In Spain, after years of insistence, uh, there has been uh, a strength in, uh, on the law uh, for supporting the cyclists in this, in this aspect. Uh, can you tell us a little more about, about this, uh, about what you are uh, supporting? Yeah, just because it's, when we come to Spain, and especially in the, in the training camps at the beginning of the season, we even take a little bit too much advantage of the law that is set up in Spain now, because it's too, it's too nice. We can ride one next to each other and the cars wait and the cars pass a little bit far away from us. So uh, they always stay overtake in a safe situation. And it's something that doesn't happen in Italy and I'm living in, in Monaco, so it doesn't happen too much in France, in France too. Uh, even if in France there is a kind of a law with some, you know, some distance banner on the road that I love, say to the people to respect the cyclists. But actually Spain is the only country who's really enforced this rule and, and it's really nice. Especially because I can, I can take a bike with my kid and be safe to go on the road because I know people can respect me. If you do this in any other country, then you're always scared. If you take it from a little bit, maybe 100 meters on the normal road because you need to go on a bike path, then you're always scared. That's, that's great for, to hear from, from someone who is not from Spain. Really, really interesting. But uh, also, a few years ago in Spain, it became vital that uh, you crashed with a beer. With a bear. Sorry, uh, Mateo. What, what I, uh, happened? Uh, what happened? <laughs> he just crossed my road and I, and I crashed into him. Now, I was training in California and uh, I was doing my efforts up and down the mountain and I was passing in the middle of like a, a village. Uh, and that year, the snow was really, really big during the winter. It was like more than 15, 15, 16 meters of snow on the on, on the hill, on the on the mountain, sorry. So the bears, uh, you know, with the, I don't know in English, when they go for the long uh, sleep during the winter, yeah. uh, they, get just, they get just wake up. Uh, and of course, with the, with the snow still in the mountain, they don't find food. So they, they all went down to the, to the village to find into the rubbish, into the garbage, some food. And this little bear was not that little, was actually pretty big. <laughs> uh, uh, he was like just in the garden and some dogs saw him and started to bark and he just ran away. And he ran away just when I was coming down. So imagine a dog just cross your road and you crash, but it's not a dog, it's a bear. So that's a bit different. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's that's frightening and, and amazing at the same time. Um, as as the last question, Matteo, uh, imagine that uh, the CCC partnership disappears in 2021 and you have to, to look for a new team. If the opportunity appears, would you write again for for Patrick Lefebvre and Quick Step? 
Why not? Why not? Uh, of course, uh, it's a team where I start my career, and it's a it's a team that I know. That is already something, something that is a is a point in favor. But of course, I prefer uh, for the moment. I prefer to say, okay, uh, I took some decision in the, through the years because of because of my life goes in some direction, and I like to keep this direction. But of course, uh, with this situation of uh, of the virus, everything is changed for a lot of people, and it's changing a lot for us too. So let's let, let's take it day by day. We don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's impossible to to put up your mind with plans at the moment and maybe get get to change the plan again. And at the moment, I'm living without a plan. So I jump in day by day. What the news are and uh, and adapting every single day. It's the easiest way to to get on without making your mind too complicated. So with these words of Matteo Trentin, we are going to close the the interview. It has been a pleasure to have you, Matteo. And uh, Diego, it's interesting to keep uh, watching us because we are going to have more riders, no? Yes, in the few days we, we're going to have uh, riders like Michael Bus or, or Pavel Sivakov. But for now, we have to thank you, Mateo, for, for having us. It's been a, a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good job. Keep it up. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.